Hello, and this is our group presentation. I am Chan Chai from class 2A05, and together with Tianmin and Chenyin, we'll be discussing the steps involved in the replication process of the E. coli genome. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hopefully. Please? The initiation step would occur in the origin of replication, otherwise known as the RIC. This structure consists of 245 base pairs, which include 3 13 mers and 4 9 mers. DNA A would first bind to the 9 mers. The DNA would wrap around these proteins and would force the DNA in the adjacent 13 mers, which are AT rich regions, to denature via ATP hydrolysis. Next, DNA C would assist the binding of DNA B helicase to the template. Helicase would cause breakage of the parental double helix, which is unwinding basically. Breakage by helicase is done using ATP hydrolysis. There are also other proteins which help in the initiation step. The unwinding of DNA causes a significant amount of stress on the DNA. Hence, topoisomerases are present to reduce the strain. Also present are the single strand binding proteins. These proteins bind onto the DNA strands and stabilize them to keep the replication bubble open. Hence, with the replication bubble open, the elongation step can now be carried out. In elongation, the formation of DNA always occurs in the 5' to 3' direction. So, on the 3' to 5' strand, the DNA would be synthesized continuously, and this would be called the leading strand. While, on the 5' to 3' strand, DNA will be synthesized in small segments called Okazaki fragments, and later joined together by DNA ligase. This will be called the lagging strand. In the leading strand, the DNA template will read 3' to 5'. The strand would be synthesized continuously from 5' to 3' in the direction of movement of the replication fork. DNA polymerase requires a template and a free 3' hydroxyl group to add the new nucleotides to. So, RNA primers must be first synthesized to start the mass production of DNA. These primers would be synthesized by an enzyme called primase, which is part of a primosome, which will make an RNA primer around 3 to 10 nucleotides long. This primer will mark the starting site for DNA polymerase tree to synthesize the new daughter strand. However, to confer high processivity of DNA polymerase tree, it must be together with a sliding clamp which will move along the DNA template and is attached by slide clamp loaders. However, for the lagging strand, it is a different story altogether. On the lagging strand, the DNA would read 5' to 3' and the DNA would be synthesized discontinuously in the 5' to 3' direction. This means that the lagging strand is synthesized in small segments first and later joined up together. As mentioned before, these small segments are known as Okazaki fragments. As DNA B helicase unwinds the DNA, primers continuously synthesize their segments of RNA primers. After that, DNA polymerase 3 would come in to make the DNA part of the Okazaki fragments while leaving a small space in between each one. To make one continuous lagging strand of daughter DNA, a number of factors come into play to make this happen. DNA polymerase 1 and RNase H perform leak translation to remove the RNA primers and replace them with DNA in the 5' to 3' direction. And finally, the gaps between the fragments are ligated together by DNA ligase, making a full strand of DNA. If there is any case of incorporation errors occurring during elongation, DNA polymerase 1 and DNA polymerase 3 can correct them as they possess 3' to 5' exonuclease activity. The site of termination in the replication of DNA in E. coli is opposite to where the origin of replication occurs. This is done by the binding of a terminator protein. Type 2 DNA topoisomerase would separate the DNA into two circular daughter DNA molecules. Hence, now we will have two copies of the E. coli genome.